when exploring you know the many social media platforms out there that we can post content on today some may be more effective than others depending our business and our target market yeah. Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I am the founder and CEO of Benefic Marketing. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. And as I've stated many times before, I'm just a genuine you know, lover and you know, an application guy when it comes to the different things within marketing and business and things like that. So all the things that, that we talk about here on the channel, I'm consistently putting into effect into our own businesses, testing, learning, and then ideally sharing some of the missteps and lessons learned kind of along the way. Uh, so over the last few weeks, we've talked a lot about marketing. Uh, this week, we're shifting into how to start creating content for businesses. Kind of your starting point when it comes to creating content and the different things that we can do out there. So creating content for our business can be one of the easiest ways to share our story, build credibility, and provide value to our prospects and customers. So over the next you know, few minutes, we're gonna go through a few considerations as we dive into where we can post, the types of content that we can post, and a few key points on how we get started doing this. Let's start with where to post. It is important to remember that sharing content happens both online and offline in the business world today. While it may be easy to think about content in social media posts, blogs, YouTube videos, remembering that you know print flyers, mailers, magazine articles, and billboards can also still be effective content mediums. The most important consideration when determining where to post is being able to properly identify where our ideal prospects spend large portions of their time. For example, when exploring you know, the many social media platforms out there that we can post content on today, some may be more effective than others depending our business and our target market. If our target prospects are genuinely or generally, you know, high school age kids, um, it's likely, more likely at least, that we'll find more of them on TikTok versus, say, LinkedIn as an example. So due to this, you know, the content that we choose to create that actually resonates with this target will probably do a little bit better on TikTok versus the other platforms. Each platform can work well, so long as we understand who, primarily, is on each of these platforms and how they choose to consume information. So let's talk a little bit about the types of content then. You know, another consideration as we dive into creating content is understanding what types of content we can actually create. So we can choose to do long form written, such as you know blog post articles, things like that. We can do short form written, which is more like our LinkedIn posts or Facebook posts that can be either short or long, um, or even super short written form, which you know great example of this would be like Twitter or the X platform. You know each can convey that same message, but in different ways to different people depending on how they consume that information. We can also do the same thing for video and audio, long form, short form, et cetera. Images, um, you know, we can do photos, we can do graphics, we can do GIFs, we can do uh, infographics, artwork, and really a lot of different ways to kind of get into it. So often the platform that we choose, so going back to that first part of the conversation here, will dictate the type of content that we produce. So like as an example of this, short form, short form video is at the core of TikTok, but it doesn't necessarily tend to play quite as well on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's really good with infographics and photos and longer form written posts, generally speaking. Whereas TikTok, that wouldn't play at all. So just kind of knowing that will help identify uh, the types of content that we, we may want to produce. So take this, you know, taking this back and knowing our, our target prospects, our ideal audience, when we understand how they best consume information, we can better curate our content to fit their needs. If we know that our audience is a group of, let's say, avid podcast listeners, it may be more effective for us to choose a podcasting platform as our primary content methodology if we know that's how our ideal audience actually consumes information and, and does something with it. Oftentimes, we may need to choose a variety of content types to communicate with our audience where they are at any given time. So if you're like most humans I know, myself included, 
you likely consume content in a variety of ways depending on where you are and what you are doing. So due to this, I tend to recommend repurposing content for various content mediums. Again, as an example, if we, if we record a long form video, you know, a YouTube video or a podcast or something like this, we can also post this as an audio podcast. We can also transcribe it. Uh, we can transcribe that video and make it a written blog post. It can also then, you know, be cut into, you know, long form written into to multiple short form written posts. Uh, we can take the, the long form video and cut it into several short form video clips. All of a sudden we have several pieces of content from that single video that we started with. This makes that process just a little bit easier to manage, especially when we're starting out, we don't have all the time in the world. So those are kind of some of the things when it comes to the types of content or the types of, of mediums that we want to be able to produce out there. So how do we produce content? How do we get started with this? And there's a lot of different things that I've kind of learned along the way, and we'll, we'll continue to share and, and, and go through those over the next few weeks. But to get started, there are really two important factors or foundations to creating content that we abide by, that I abide by, to be effectively uh, able to merge both our content creation with our actual marketing plan and kind of bringing these two things together. So the first of these is target offer copy. Simply put, target is the starting point and it's most important, the most important of these three words. Before we do any content creation, we must first identify our target, our audience. Who specifically are we choosing to communicate with? The clearer we can make this, the better. Rather than a broad segment, it's a business owners in the United States. That's a very, very broad segment. Segment. Uh, we get specific. You know, we take that same thing, we narrow it down. Maybe it's dental practice owners in Austin, Texas, who have been in business for three years, who have a staff of eight and went to dental school at XYZ University. When we work to focus on the latter and we get that specificity, we can create messages that are you know, really, really resonant with the person we wish to communicate with. It's no longer a broad thing. It's very, very specific and targeted to the person that we actually want to talk to. Once the target is identified, we can determine where we find them and create the offer that is designed with them in mind. Only then can we work on the copy, which is the actual just words that we use. The best copy in the world is useless if it's aimed at the wrong target. That's why the target is first. The second key in producing content, so after target offer copy, the second big piece is attention, interest, desire, action. Or if you know, you're a follower of Russell Brunson's work, uh, hook story offer is like a version of, of this same type of a concept. The key here is that when we create content of any type, the first thing we must do is hook the viewer or the reader. Grab attention and peak interest. If we don't grab attention first, the rest of the video, post, podcast, whatever, will never be consumed. The hook is the most important part of this process. The simple way to look at this and uh, kind of the way that I like to look at it and kind of remember is that we have approximately three seconds to earn 30 seconds. And then we have that 30 second block to earn about three minutes. Once we get them hooked in that first three seconds, we have a much stronger ability to get them through the next 30 seconds. If we can get them interested long enough for the, the first 30 seconds of our video article, whatever, our likelihood of gaining three minutes of their time goes up dramatically. So once we've hooked them, we tell them a story, which is creating that desire. And then we tell them what action to take next, the offer, which sometimes is the most forgotten piece of the process. Like we got them interested, we, we did all this fun stuff, but we forgot to tell them what to do next. Like, like the post, share it, subscribe, you know, click here to read further, uh, you name it. There's a number of different you know, actions that we can advise them to take next. And um, that'll be all part of the marketing plan we have to walk them through this process first. So content can be a very rewarding way to express your business's personality, to boost overall lead flow, not to mention the impact it can actually have on the sales conversion rates. That said, there's a lot more to it than just simply saying, I'm going to make a post and go do it today. Starting with these key points here in this video will get your business on the right path. 
over the coming weeks, we'll continue to dive a little bit deeper, share a few more tactics that you or your team can continue to use as you navigate this process of content creation for your business. So we'll see you in the one next week as we dive a little bit deeper into this, this topic. My name is Tanner O'Brien and look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.